In today's video, we're going to talk about the best exercises to include in your workout program in order to get the best results. What's up guys, Ryan here, TrotoWayTraining.com, and I know you've heard somebody at some point tell you that you have to include squats if you want to get nice legs or you have to include bench press if you want to build a nice chest or you know insert name of exercise here insert name of body part here everybody claims that there are these perfect exercises but in reality i'm going to tell you right off the bat there are no specific exercises that you have to include in your workout program instead what we're going to talk about in this video are six movement patterns and exercises that fit into each of these six movement patterns. And then as long as you're including a couple of exercises from each of the six categories, then you can rest assured that you have your exercise selection under control and you have this portion of the workout set in stone. Now, there are a few other things that go into working out such as your reps and sets and weight and so on and so forth. And this is actually the fourth part of a series that I'm doing. This video will make perfect sense in its entirety without having any of the previous information from any of the other videos, but I just say that to let you know that if you want to watch the other videos, I will link them down in the description so you can check those out when you get done with this one. So we have our vertical push, we have a horizontal push, we have a horizontal pull, a vertical pull, a squat and a hip hinge. And you're gonna quickly learn that all of these categories are pretty self-explanatory with the exception of maybe the hip hinge. That one might take a little bit more explaining. But let's start with the vertical push. So this is gonna be your overhead presses, your dumbbell overhead press, your barbell overhead press, machine overhead press. So basically anything that says shoulder press or overhead press is gonna be your vertical pushes. The muscles that are worked with vertical pushes is gonna be the clavicular head of your pec, which is this very top portion of the chest muscle here that connects to the clavicle. It's gonna be your anterior deltoid, which is the front of the delt here. It's gonna be your lateral deltoid and your posterior deltoid. And if you're doing dumbbells or if you're standing, it's gonna shift a little bit more of the emphasis from that anterior deltoid onto the rest of the shoulder because at that point the stabilization of the exercise becomes a little bit more demanding because we don't have a bar that's locked together you have dumbbells that move freely or you're standing up so you have to worry about moving forward and backwards at that point too so just keep in mind that if you're doing a seated barbell that's gonna put the most emphasis on that anterior deltoid. And if you're doing a standing dumbbell, that would be the other end of the spectrum. That's gonna shift more of that emphasis onto the lateral and the posterior deltoid there. Vertical pushes will also work the tricep muscle, the back of the arm here. The primary function of the tricep muscle is to extend the elbow. So when we're pressing upwards, you can see that the elbow joint is in fact getting extended so we are working the tricep muscles as well. And then next, let's move right into the horizontal push, which is going to be your barbell bench press, your dumbbell bench press, your machine chest press, your push-ups. And one thing that I do wanna point out quickly before we go any further is that you might notice that with the, all of these bench presses and with the push-ups and so on and so forth, we're pressing vertically towards the ceiling and you might wonder why that's not a vertical press. And the difference that I wanna highlight here is yes, we are pressing vertically technically, we're pressing towards the ceiling, but in respect to a vertical body, so if I'm standing up, if we could somehow have zero gravity and stand the bench press up, and I'm using that same motion though, that's gonna be horizontal relative to a vertical body. It's gonna be perpendicular to the body, and that's why it's still a horizontal push so with the vertical presses we're pressing in line with the body we're pressing parallel with the body and then with the horizontal pushes we're pushing perpendicular to the body and the horizontal push is going to work that anterior deltoid again it's going to work the entirety of the chest and again work those 
triceps as well. Next, let's move on to the vertical pull, and this is gonna be basically anything with the word pull down in it. It's gonna be your standard lat pull down, a neutral grip lat pull down, a leverage lat pull down, and again, anything with the word pull down in it. And one thing that I do wanna say here is, some people will call a tricep push down, a pull down, a tricep push down is not a pull down, so that does not count. So just throw that out there in case anybody was wondering or, or anybody was gonna be a stickler about the fact that I said anything with the word pull down in it. A tricep pull down is not a pull down, it's a push down. And the muscles that are worked with a vertical pull, it's going to be your lat muscles, so the muscles that start at the base of your low back here and work diagonally upwards and fan out and go up into the armpits there, so it comes all the way up the side here, so this big side of the back here so this is the muscle that gives you that nice V taper. You see bodybuilders do their lat spreads there. It gives that nice V taper. That's gonna be your lats that come out to the side. It's gonna work the traps, which is gonna be the mid back. It's gonna work up and fan out into the shoulders. And then it's going to come back in into the base of the neck there. So it makes kind of a cross on your upper back, shoulder and neck area. And also a vertical pull down is gonna work your teres major, which is the muscle that goes across the back of your armpit there. It's gonna be right above the lat muscles. It's gonna work the posterior deltoids, which we've already talked about, the back of the shoulders there, and also the biceps. So we're closing that elbow joint, so that, that bicep's gonna be working as well there. Next, let's go on to the horizontal pull, which is gonna be basically any rowing exercise. That includes leverage rows, dumbbell rows, barbell rows, seal rows, and T-bar rows. It's gonna work mostly the same musculature as with the vertical pulls. The one thing that I do wanna point out here is that with the vertical pulls, more of the emphasis is gonna be on the lats, whereas with the rows, more of that emphasis is going to be on the traps and on the posterior deltoids. And one thing that I do want to cover real quick while we're talking about pressing is that the incline bench press can go into either the vertical or the horizontal category depending on the angle of the bench. So my rule that I use is if the angle of the bench is 60 degrees, so about right here or less, I'm gonna count that in the horizontal category, whereas if it's more than 60 degrees, so right in here, that's gonna go into the vertical category. Let's move on to the squats. Again, this is gonna be mostly self-explanatory. Pretty much anything with the word squat in it is gonna be a squat motion, which, you know, shocker. But we have our barbell squats, our dumbbell squats, our goblet squats. You know, one thing that I do wanna point out though is there's a couple of exercises that would actually go into the squat category that most people will think about. And those are the lunges and the leg press. And why those are classified as squats, we'll actually revisit here in a minute after we talk about the hip hinges, which tend to confuse people a little bit. So with the squats, we are working primarily our quads. Most people think that the primary target of the squats is the glutes, which is not true. The quads are gonna be the primary beneficiary of the squats, and then the glutes will also get worked, yes, and then a little bit, but not quite as much with the calves. And the hamstrings are mostly silent during a squat. Now let's move on to the hip hinge. Some exercises that fit into this category are the barbell hip thrust, deadlift, stiff leg deadlift, and the cable pull through. And these are primarily gonna target the glutes, the hamstrings, the back of the leg there, and then also the spinal erectors, which would be these low back muscles. The one thing that I do wanna point out here is that the barbell hip thrust is primarily going to target the glutes and not as much with the hamstrings and low back. That would be the one exception to this rule. Now, some people get the squat motions and the hip hinge motions confused. And I'm gonna throw up a video of each up here on the screen. And the one thing that I do wanna point out is the angle of the knee at the bottom of the rep. With squat type motions, we're gonna be bringing that femur, the upper leg bone, we're gonna be bringing it down to be parallel with the ground or possibly even lower. Whereas if you look at the deadlift up on the screen, you'll notice that at the bottom of the rep, when the weight touches the ground, that the knee joint is very 
open. The femur is not even close to being parallel with the ground. So I think the best way to describe the difference is with the squat motions, there's gonna be a lot more emphasis on the motion at the knee. So we're gonna be bringing that femur down really low on purpose. Whereas with the hip hinges, the primary action is at the hips and the knee motion will be a lot more limited. So with the hip hinges, we're only moving the knee as much as is necessary to complete the movement. So with the standard deadlift, that's gonna be a little bit more motion at the knee. And then with the stiff leg deadlift, that's gonna be almost no motion at all at the knee. Now let's quickly cover some isolation exercises. We have our chest fly motion, and again, we're gonna talk about these in terms of motions and you can pick whichever exercises that you want that fit into these categories. We're gonna cover this a lot more quickly than we did with the six primary movement patterns though. So we have our chest flies, our bicep curls, tricep extensions, hamstring curl, leg extension, calf raise, lateral raise, and rear delt fly. So what I want you to do is pick two exercises from those primary six movement patterns that we spent so much time on, and then pick one to three isolation exercises to go on at the end. And I specifically say the end, put those after the primary exercises. And the reason for that is that these bigger compound exercises, so we're working multiple joints at a time, we're working multiple muscle groups at a time, those are gonna have more bang for your buck. You're gonna be working multiple muscle groups per rep versus just one muscle group per rep. So we're gonna get the most benefit out of those, so we want to do those when we are the freshest. And then the other reason is that these compound exercises that are loaded a lot more heavily, they have a little bit higher of an injury risk in comparison to isolation exercises. So again, we wanna make sure we do those at the beginning to minimize the injury risk. Make sure we do those when we're fresh so that we can ensure that our form is better and then we're not gonna hurt ourselves at the gym. That way we can continue going to the gym and continue making progress. One last topic that I wanna to touch on in this video is variety. A lot of people will tout this whole muscle confusion thing as an important aspect of getting muscle growth. When in reality, if you switch up your exercises too often, you're gonna be getting suboptimal results because you're gonna be having to relearn all of these exercises. And I think part of where this myth comes from is the fact that when you switch out to a new exercise, you can add weight to the exercise very quickly when in reality what's happening there is that you're making neuromuscular adaptations more so than actual muscle strength and muscle growth adaptations. So basically you're learning how to do that motor pattern more efficiently and as you get more efficient at it then you're able to add that weight really quickly. And so if you're switching out exercises constantly then you're gonna be spending a lot of time relearning exercises and not actually getting as much muscle growth benefit or as much strength gain benefit as if you were to leave exercises in for a longer time. And my basic rule of thumb is that for the primary exercises, so the exercises that fit into those initial six categories, I'll leave those in for a minimum of 12 weeks at a time because they are more complex and they do take longer to learn, I'll leave those in for longer periods of time. And then with the isolation exercises that are much easier to learn and master, you could get away with swapping those out probably as often as every two weeks. Personally with my clients, I'll leave them in there for four weeks at a time and then I'll cycle them out. And really the only reason I do that is just so that there's some freshness to the workout. You could really just get your selection of exercises and go for pretty much as long as you wanted to, as long as you're covering every motor pattern, as long as you're covering every movement, then you could probably just leave those in there for you know, indefinitely and do just fine. But it would get boring after a while, so we do wanna switch those out every once in a while. Thank you so much for watching this video, guys. This is my third time recording this video. My camera crashed twice when I was three quarters of the way through recording this video. So if you enjoyed it, make sure to drop me a thumbs up, drop me a comment, make me feel better about the hour and a half that I just wasted dealing with camera issues. And 
it'll make my day so much better. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. I will be back Sunday on the Treadway Training blog to talk about this topic in more detail. As always, God bless you and your family, and I'll see you Sunday. Thank you.